we're going. This thing's happening. This thing is it's happening. You know why it's happening? It's happening because it's Wednesday. And your microphone is way away from your yeah, face. Right. Nobody be able to hear you. It's Wednesday. It's 8 p.m. Central Standard Time and some other time wherever you're at. Thanks for being here. You are the coolest people on the face of this fine earth, and so we appreciate it. We appreciate hanging out with you. Today, we actually, we have a topic. Something I wanted to talk about because it's all over the news, and I think we need to address it, and that is inflation has gone through the roof. We'll talk mm -hmm. more about the details later, but it's definitely having an impact on the aquarium hobby. It's having an impact on every single industry across the land, and we wanted to just kind of summarize some things that have helped us save money in the past. Maybe some of these things you know, if you've been listening to us for a while, you probably do know most of these things, but maybe there's one or two things like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Or you just pick up on one little thing that's new that will hopefully be of value to you. And if you're doing all these things already, at least you can feel better knowing, you know <laughs> what? They're doing these things, I'm doing these things, plus there's a couple other things you're doing that I'm not doing, which makes you even better. So there's that. So cool. uh, what do we have going on for this week? Well, Monday we did something you have been pushing for a very long time, and I kept pushing it off. Yes. And that was the community versus species only tank. Yeah. And that was, that was a lot of fun because we wound up coming up with, I think, a lot more comparisons and advantages, disadvantages, I suppose, than I, I thought we were going to. So that was pretty cool. So Monday on Primetime Aquatics, that was a species only versus community aquarium. And then part of what inspired this topic for me tonight was the video you also did today, which was on the small scape. And what was your topic for today? Well, how to, how to do a budget aquascape. There's so many different ways that you can save big cashola doing an aquascape. And can you please share with the class just how late you were up last night finishing that video for this morning? I would say, well, when you when you finish doing the the edit and you you upload it and all that, it, and you schedule it, you schedule it, you, you typically, I'm, I'm usually late on the game, so I schedule it for the next day, but that really wasn't the case. I schedule it for today. <laughs> because... Just later in the morning. Yeah. I'm not the fastest, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, so, but you, you, you stayed up late and yeah, you got that video out. Yeah, you played through it. That was yeah. cool. You're probably a little tired right now. But, but not too bad, though. Okay, you, you will be later. When it's time for bed, you'll be tired. <laughs> One <laughs> would hope so. I'll be. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah, that's part of what I wanted to cover today, too, because I thought that was a really good video. It was a longer video, but I it think was you covered, but you covered so many different things, and I think they were all important. Continuing on through the week, tomorrow on Primetime Aquatics, we'll have our members video for you hanging out in the fish room downstairs doing something of some importance, I suppose. Cool. Friday, I've got a species profile that I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. And I finally got the video of the fish that I thought was appropriate for the species profile. So that'll be Friday on Primetime Aquatics. And on the small scape, are you going to be continuing your series or are you doing something different on Saturday? You know what, I'm, I'm too excited to do something that I got from a uh, fishy friend. From, a fishy, let's, let's see if I can this say this. This is the lack a, of sleep. A fishy friend. What was I going to say? A fishy friend. Anyway, so that's what happens when you've got about three hours of sleep. <laughs> I thought you, there was a, I love act, uh, all right, I'm just gonna sentence pieces and <laughs> sputtering <laughs> fragments of words. Alliteration. I was gonna say I love alliteration, but I can't think of the final F word. Uh, don't. The, this is a family uh, show. Don't be talking about oh, that. Please, not me. A f I don't know. Okay, it was gonna, gonna be really on. catchy. It was gonna be amazing, but it's just not to be. Anyway, the point is you're you're going to be. It's something not, else. I'm hopping okay. to something else okay. because it's a product that I have to show you guys. I'm so excited. Now, one thing, because I, I did want to mention this for next Wednesday. It's kind of a, I don't know if you've heard, it's kind of a big deal. And I know that John and Lisa had already mentioned it last week. Oh, what are did. you doing on Wednesday of oh, next week? Yes, there's a, a little aquascaping challenge. That's right. Mm -hmm. So this was born last fall in a number of brains. And we started talking about how fun it would be to do kind of like a ladies collaboration, scaping collaboration. It's really not 
a competition as much as it is a bunch of fish lady friends getting together, escaping tanks. And so what's going to happen on Wednesday of next week is you're going to put a video out on the small scape, correct? Mm -hmm. And you are going to be aquascaping a five-gallon aqua top all-in-one aquarium. It's the bullet aquarium that we've got in the kitchen. Now you've got a new one that you're going to be aquascaping. But you're not the only one who's going to be doing this. No. Who else is going to be doing this? Let's see. We have Lisa, KG Tropicals. We have Taylor from Simply Betta and Kasha, Creative Pet Keeping. So the four of them have gotten together and they have, and I kind of assisted where I could, uh, they're going to be doing this aquascaping challenge. And what's going to be pretty cool is it's going to be interactive. And here's why. Not only will they be doing this challenge, and I would highly encourage you to watch all four videos and we'll, you'll remind everybody of that. And I'll share them on Wednesday when they come out. But you'll also be able to go to Aquatops, and don't quote me on this just yet, but I think it's their Instagram page. You're going to be able oh. to vote, either Instagram or Facebook. I don't remember which one. The details will be out when she does the video. But you're going to be able to vote on which one you think is your favorite. And I highly encourage you, again, this is a collaboration, not a competition. Go watch all four videos, mm -hmm. right? The idea is watch all four videos. Pick the, the tank that you really like the best and go to the Aquatop. Again, it's either going to be Instagram or Facebook. The information will be out there when the video comes out. Vote for it. Now, what's cool is Aquatop has worked out a situation where they're going to be awarding, basically doing a, a free tank sort of thing. So if for the people who are involved in the liking of the Aquatop page or something, so it might be Facebook. I'll have more details Wednesday. You'll have more details Wednesday. But there's an opportunity to win a free five gallon aqua top tank, Sweet. which is pretty cool. So, and I believe that uh, it, it should be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be pretty cool. So hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, where we're gonna be, uh, we have the GCCA, Greater Chicago Cichlid Association Swap coming up on the 24th. You're not gonna be there. No. Because you've got other things going on, but Eli and I are going to be there. Lucky Eli. Yeah, he's, he not only gets to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and help us bag fish, now he gets to go to the swap, which normally he just goes right back to bed and sleeps until like 1 o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. So this time he's coming with me. He's going to be my little helper, so that'll be fun. Uh, thank you to everybody who showed up at the Green Water Swap last Sunday. It was yeah. a big crowd. A lot of people stopped by. Thank you for that. For those of you who are looking for fish, we will have the fish on the website probably Tuesday or so of next week for the Green Water Swap available for pre-order. So you get the fish you want. So that's the dealio with all of that stuff for right now. Now, topic for tonight, inflation. This is now turning into a macroeconomics class. Uh, yeah. As some of you know, I, I'm the last couple of years, two and a half years, I have been obsessed with macroeconomics and, and finance. I, it's just one of those things that, I don't know, it overtook me. I read dozens of books and thousands of hours of video, and I just got way carried away. So this, this is a topic that interests me anyway on, a, on an economic level. And we are all very aware, I am sure, whether you've, you don't need to read any books and you don't need to watch any videos to know that when you go to the store, things cost more than they did a couple of years ago. Well, and that's happening across the board. It's in all industries. And it's impacting the fish keeping hobby as well. And so, you know, the, the headline inflation rate just came out, the CPI, I think it was about eight and a half percent. And that number, they keep saying, oh, you know, that's the highest inflation in 40 years. No, it isn't. It's actually much higher because had they used the same metrics today that they used in 1980 or 81, however, they're, they're converting this, the actual inflation rate, rate would be closer to 17 percent in the last 12 months. So it's actually extremely high. It's impacting the fish. Oh, that's one to grow on. Well, what do you uh, know? What's one of the things that's impacting the fish keeping hobby is transportation costs. So as fuel goes up, obviously that's driving the, the cost of transportation, which means when fish have to get shipped from overseas to a wholesaler, to a pet store, to you, that's all costing more money. Even if you've got companies, and there are plenty of companies who are breeding large amounts of fish in the United States, they still have to be transported. And as some of you know who have ever purchased fish online, that transportation cost is, it's expensive, right? It's expensive to ship a box of fish. And so what we do is we, we try to maximize our, our efficiencies there and order as much as we can to bring the cost of the shipping down. But that's impacting everybody. Uh, that impacts our fish food, that impacts our filtration, it impacts the cost of manufacturing stuff. 
when you have supply side disruptions as we've had over the last couple years and the, the products are not being manufactured or they're sitting on a shipping container off the coast of California somewhere for months on end, that all has an impact on cost and it's impacting what we do here. And this hobby is supposed to bring us joy. It's supposed to bring us uh, just happiness, relax us. And the last thing we want is be priced out of our hobby. And so some of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight, I, I, like I said, I'm sure you've heard some of this stuff before. And if you've been watching the channel, I don't know how much of this is going to be brand new. But it is. I know it's been well over a year since we've addressed it in a live stream. And it's probably been longer than that since I've made a dedicated video to how to save money in the aquarium hobby. With all that being said, here are some things. Are you ready? Here are some things that we do. Are you ready? I am. Are you ready? Am yeah. I ready? I think I'm ready. Before we start though. Before we start. Oh my thought uh, knowledge is power says I love that shirt. Oh, thank you. This is uh yeah, Fishner. This is actually Agno Aquatics. Agno Aquatics in Ohio. Uh, Strongsville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's uh the and I've got a plant nerd shirt. Yep. And I got I'm wearing the fish nerd shirt today. So Amazing. can you please, while we're doing this, there's a number of super chats that have come in. Oh, and sure. make sure that we because if they're not we're going to answer them for sure, but I want to kind of get through this whole saving money thing. Uh, Jay Oliver, thank you for being a member. Uh, hey, thank Jay you Oliver. for six months. Hey, Fish wow. Family, hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. Thank you very much. Hope you're doing the same. Hopefully, we'll see you at an Aquashella pretty soon. But yeah, please, yeah. it starts with uh, season. And just please make sure we, we write those down and everything because okay. we're going to lose them in this, this thing. Okay, first thing, saving money. I've kind of tried to organize this as best I can in terms of, you'll see. Uh, so first of all, tanks. Obviously, fish keeping requires tanks. There are a couple things that you can do. I'm sure many of us are familiar with the Petco dollar per gallon sales. That's where the fish tanks cost $1 per gallon up to a 29 gallon. Once you get to the 40 gallon breeders and above, they do like a 50% off standard retail price. At least that's what they do around here. So your 40 breeders, your 75s are a little bit more than a dollar per gallon, but it's a great way to save money. A lot of people ask us, hey, where did you get all your tanks? That's where we got them, right? Uh, are they the greatest quality on the face of this earth? No. Have they lasted us pretty much problem free with one exception that was 175 gallon, had a little bit of a leak, mm. took it back, no problems taking it back and getting an exchange. Obviously, it's a pain in the, you know what, to swap out the, the tank and the water and the scaping. But other than that, 80 tanks, most of them dollar per gallon. Most of them have been just fine. But there's another place that you should be looking, especially around now. And that is just online, your Craigslist, your, if you are part of a, or there's a fish club in your area and they've got a classified section, don't overlook that. So a lot of people are like, oh, where do I get a used tank? And they go on Craigslist or they go on eBay. But if you are someone who's lucky enough to have fish clubs in the area, most of the time on their web, or not most of the time, but sometimes on their website, they'll have a classified section. Check those out as well because the unfortunate truth is when it comes to the hobby, I've heard people who have read research, right? So I've talked to people who've, who've read research that shows the average fish keeper, average fish keeper stays in the hobby for around six months. Mm. Guess what that means? That means most likely what's happening is everybody or not everybody, but a number of people who decided to buy a fish tank because they were home a lot over the last couple of years, especially the, you know, 2020 or so. And now life is starting to get busy again and maybe back to normal. Well, guess what? Sometimes the fish keeping hobby is just more than they can handle. And what that means is you can find some really good deals sometimes on the Craigslist and the like the fish club uh, classified sections. So it's worth looking at because in my opinion, especially for standard size tanks, so I'm talking about your two and a half, so all the way up through at least 55 to 75 gallon if it's just a tank, I'm probably not looking at it unless it's about 50 cents a gallon. I mean, why would you pay? If someone's going to sell 20 long and I can get a brand new one for 20 bucks, I'm going to have to have a deal there in order to spend the money for a 20 gallon. So, okay, if it's just a tank, if I can get a new one for 20, the old one, maybe $10, right? 
And if you're gonna throw the lights and the filter and all that stuff in, then okay, well, maybe I'll pay 30 bucks for the whole setup. But you can find great deals there. Now, the equipment side of things, again, look online. Sometimes going to the big box stores, that's not always the best deal. And once again, be looking through the used sections. If you're finding a hang on back filter or a canister filter that's only six months old, I mean, that thing may have five, eight, 10 years of life left or more. So look through those classified sections, look through online. By the way, I've linked some videos down in the description below, uh, one of which was a video that you and I did on Amazon, uh, some of the good deals on Amazon. I love and, doing Amazon videos. Um, I love Amazon stuff. And home, de uh, not home, uh, home improvement stores. We did one there that I also linked. I also love so, home improvement stores. Walking around on a Saturday, smelling all the good stuff there, like tools, like fertilizer, like fertilizer. <laughs> yes, Ace Hardware smell, fertilizer, power tools. I was kind of kidding on that one. And dirt, weirdo. Uh, I like smelling fertilizer and um, uh, it's a lot tools. It's just just so much fun. Uh, sorry, not that's sorry. Okay. I'm not sorry. That's all right. Uh, also, when it comes to equipment, don't be afraid to do some research on the brands of equipment that maybe are more cost effective. So it would be nice if I could outfit every single one of my tanks with a Fluval 3.0. That'd be cool. But it's also cost prohibitive. And so we've done lots of reviews on the Nycruz and the Beams Work and the Hyger lights, which are those lower price point lights that are still doing a decent job. I mean, obviously read the reviews, go through, watch watch reviews and unboxings, but some of those lights can be pretty good. Yes, right. they certainly can. Uh, lids, polycarbonate, saves a ton of money. All right, you get the polycarbonate in the quick ship packages, either on Amazon, uh, Greenhouse Siding, or the Greenhouse Megastore Direct.com, I think it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, something similar to that, eight millimeter, you can cut it to whatever size you want. It's light. It's not going to break on you. You can cut holes in it for feeding. And generally speaking, it's going to be a lot cheaper than trying to find glass lids. Yes, for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's it's a little bit safer. Um, one of the things we use a lot is uh, bulk filter floss. Oh, right? yes. Yeah, it looks like a big, ginormous roll of toilet paper. Always. Yeah, only it's about three it's feet huge. tall, at least in our fish room it is, because we buy so much of it. So bulk filter floss, this is one of the first money-saving tips videos I ever did. I was standing on a ladder in front of the 75 gallon. <laughs> I remember it, nice. but it that can save a ton of money. You, sh you don't need to buy the filter cartridges on any brand of filter. No. I know that some of them, the, the filter cartridges fit all nice and neat. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, ah, oh, should, I, should I do that? You don't need to. Bulk filter floss off of Amazon. Uh, that is definitely going to save you a bunch of money. I know some people use, a lot of people use the polyfill uh, stuff that you buy in bulk, but you will save a ridiculous amount of money uh, doing that. One place that I think can save you a lot of money, they're not a channel sponsor. I'm pretty sure they have no idea that I'm e I even exist, but I really like them. And their service is outstanding and it's, their company is really, it, it's probably more centered around people who have fish rooms or multiple tanks, but that's gemco.com. So gemco.com, I'm just going to put the spelling down here in the chat. Yeah, because I went to guess that. I know. Hold on a second. Where Where is it? Gemco.com. Is that right? There you go. So I just put it in the chat. Gemco.com is a, is a little gem of a place. They sell a lot of bulk stuff and all kinds of things, filter floss, components, filters, all kinds of stuff that can save you a lot of money. Now, again, you're sometimes going to be buying in bigger quantities, but it's definitely a place worth checking out. It's fun just to kind of go through their website. The one downside, if you are someone who really doesn't like to talk to people on the phone, well, this might not be the place for you because they don't really have a way to order online. You have to call them and you have to place your order on the phone. But the lady who usually answers, she's wonderful. Probably some of the best customer service I've ever experienced in my life, and That's I've been dealing with them for nice. a long time, certainly over 10 years. Uh, aquascaping stuff, what do you got? Tell us about some, just a couple highlights. I don't want you doing your whole entire video because that was 16 minutes, but you can tell us some. <laughs> I don't think I could talk for 16 minutes straight, but I'll give it a shot. Oh. Um, 
aquas well the number one thing i would have to say for aquascaping pool fil- uh pool filter sand pool yeah. filter sand and um that just sounded weird you know when you say a word and it, you're like that doesn't sound right but it's right Road. Road. <laughs> why right, what movie is that from hold on Road. Why? Why can't I say that word? Oh man, the nitrous oxide's leaking into the car. You done? All right. And okay, pea yeah. gravel. Pea gravel. So for gravel and sand, those are two huge money savers because you can get a bag of the sand for like dollars, like three, four, five, six dollars, instead of buying twenty five bag, uh, twenty five pound bag for like twenty bucks. Huge. But you, like for us. The brand of pool filter sand that we're gonna have to look around get yeah, better pool filter on. um hold on somebody already got it black sheep yep black sheep the hold on <laughs> laurelay aquatics and more black sheep nice yep. it was close chris he said tommy boy same movie just a different setting okay i'm sorry <laughs> basically Continue. yeah yeah <laughs> but sometimes you have to do a little extra work like rinsing it out like our pool filter sand comes in and you have to rinse it out for a long time uh, P, uh, the P gravel too is the same thing, but so pool filter sand. Save you big so bucks. a lot of people ask about the black, the blasting black diamond blasting sand. A lot of people swear by it, but I'm not familiar enough with it, and I know that it can be. Um, I've heard that it's coal slag. I, I've heard that it's um, rough. I can't, I can't say either which way. So I, I personally never used it because I like top fin black sand from PetSmart, but. <laughs> No um, sponsor, no affiliation. No sponsor. Whatsoever. They also don't know me. Although they should, because as much as you talk about it, it's kind of making us all sick. Yeah, but I always say Petco PetSmart, Petco PetSmart, because <laughs> I'm always getting plans from Petco PetSmart. Oh, so yeah. Yep. So that's those are those are good good mm-hmm. fun tips. Sure. Um, you mentioned I, I wasn't paying attention, so I was pulling you. You mentioned the landscaping places for the rocks. Um, in the video, yes, yes, especially if. Oh, I know we all want the really cool uh, rocks sometimes, the elephant stone, the the uh, seru, or the uh, dragon stone. But if you get river rocks, you can go for a really sweet biotope, like a river, river bio, biotope. Uh, so how, exactly how many hours of sleep did you get last night? Because all I know is... Like a couple. Okay. All I'm right. thinking like a couple. Okay. I'm not doing too bad. You, you want to know another story? It's somebody's birthday today. And it's really? not mine. It's, it's somebody in this it's room. My, it's my sister's birthday. And they're twins. Yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, you stayed up all night on birthday Eve. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to <laughs> Editing a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Saying, why like, did I talk Happy for... Happy birthday to me. Why did I talk for so long? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's this one's birthday today. And yeah. then plants. You know, I, I would definitely well, keep no, in mind... we're not the plants yet. Well, can we talk about plants? No, hold on. Talk about plants. We, we can talk about plants in a second, but okay. yes, the aqua, the river rocks, the flagstone. You're looking at so you go to a pet store. Gosh, yeah. You're probably paying I don't know three, four bucks a pound for rocks. It depends on the rocks. Sometimes a little cheaper. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's the three to four dollars. You go to a landscaping place. River, and by the way, it's not just river rocks. And it's not just flagstone. They've got some pretty cool stuff in yeah. some of these landscaping places. You'll pay 20, 30, 40 cents a pound. It's pretty cool. Sure is. So definitely saves a lot of money. Before you get into plants, I, I forgot something when it came to the equipment side of things, and that is Hi. aquarium stands. If you are somebody who is starting to, especially if you're starting to keep multiple tanks, like that's a thing. Buying aquarium stands at a pet store is going to cost you a small fortune. Sometimes those stands will cost you as much as the tank, if not more. So one of the things that we can do is, one, we, you can build your own stands. I've got videos out there. But the problem is, though, to buy the wood these days, lumber prices have also gone through the roof. And that's like you take into consideration your time. You're buying the wood. You're buying all the screws. It's like, wow, this is still pretty expensive. Check out like a home improvement store, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, and look at their industrial shelving. And we did the video on the smaller racking systems that could hold up to around a 20 gallon long, but it could hold like three of them. And we now use three of those stands when we did the, no, I'm sorry, four. When we did the video, it was in your Nano Nook. And then I've since added two more, and basically I've put a 20 long or two tens 
on each one of the shelves and they've all been holding up well. But even the industrial shelving, if you put a piece of plywood over it like we do for our smaller stands, you can get some big tanks on those stands. Some of those things per shelf will hold thousands of pounds. So don't overlook those things. And they're easier to put together because a wood stand, if you're gonna build it, I'm into like a double, if I had to build a double 125 stand, mm -hmm. it takes, after you know putting it all together and painting it and all that stuff, cutting all the wood, I'm into it for like a full day because I'm not like a super speedy carpenter, carpentry. I'm not into carpentry. Just whittled this all out of one piece of wood. What movie is that from? Oh, I so you're... I'm not going to say. You're always looking at me like, don't say anything. So I'm, right. I'm preempting that. That was a that. very, very obscure quote. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I whittled it all out of one piece of beech wood. And I don't tomorrow, think it's that obscure. Yeah, and tomorrow, Deb's, is it Deb's sister and her husband will become man and wife. At least that's my silly romantic idea. I don't know if it's Deb. Is that her name? No. Yeah, I think... No. Pam, no, Pam. Pam, thank you. Yeah, Pam's Pam. sister. Okay, anyway. So, uh, tell us about plants. How are you going to save money on plants? Oh, well, first of all... Meet the Fockers. Close, Stacy. Meet the parents. Yeah. But you're but rocking it. You got it. You know it. You yeah. know it. And then Chad, meet the parents right away. Plants, I say either go... F go Go big, go smaller, grow one, uh, go ones that grow really fast. So obviously, if you're going to get plants that grow really fast, guess what? You're going to be able to fill up your tank, your next tank, other tanks that you haven't gotten yet. And you're going to have so many, you know, you can have friends. You have a little snip snip. Have you ever, like, seen somebody who has plants and you're like, can I have a little snip snip? Just a little snip. And then you have plants, they have plants. Everybody has plants. It's great. The other ones are get them big. So like Anubias, if you're looking to fill up a tank, don't get them really small. Like the, you're, you're a newbie, a petite. You better have a lot of patience because it's going to take a long time for that plant to grow. It'll be beautiful. It's one of the best plants in the world, but it will take it'll take a long time. So get yourself a tube plant that's already taller to begin with, and that takes visually up some space. Or go the opposite and go smaller. Go tissue culture plants because it looks really small and puny, and you're like, well, eh, what's that? They're babies. They're going to grow, and you get multiple plants in each little magical container. I myself just got three more today. Yay. You did what? I had to get dog food. Oh, this well. is what happens. You had to get dog food and you walked out with three more plants. Yes. This is an When addict. they have them, I got to get them. We're and have I have an aquascape to we do We need to have week. an intervention because... I have to put something in the tank. All right. All right. Fine. Right? Fine. 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 Whatever. All right. Let's talk about fish. How are we saving money on fish? Well... <sighs> One way is obviously you can look online and whether that's Aquabid, whether that's like Flip Aquatics or a place, you know, it just sells fish. Keep in mind, you want to make use of the shipping. So what that means is as you start to think about, hey, I want to order these fish, it might not be a bad idea to call, especially if you're going to order from a, a company that does this on a regular basis. Hey, I want to fill out a, an entire box. You know, so what, how many bags are going to fit in a box sort of thing? And how many fish can I fit in a bag? And then you can start to really fill out that, that box and shape, save on shipping and still potentially find good deals online. Obviously, where we save a ton of money when it comes to fish is the local fish clubs. And I've mentioned those a million times. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are lucky because we've got not only three local fish clubs, but we also have the Chicago Plant Society. We have the Chicago Live Bearer Society. We have the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association. We have the Greenwater Aquarius Society. And there, I'm sure there's more, but those are the ones that we are, uh, or at least the three fish clubs we've, we've been a part of in the past or currently. And it saves you so much money. It might be worth driving that hour. I can't tell you how many people go to the Greenwater swaps and go to the GCCA swaps that are coming from out of state. And they make it just a fun day. They get up in the morning, they drive an hour or two, they buy a bunch of fish, and then they drive back. And yeah, they spent a little bit of gas money, but in the long run, they got fish that are healthy, that people have cared for in their own home, that are, excuse me, hopefully disease-free. And they also saved a lot of money, but that's not the only thing. Obviously, you're going to save money on fish, but you're going to save money on plants. You will most likely save money on rocks and wood. So you basically save big time going to these swaps and auctions. So yep. check them out. Do a little bit of research. See if there's one in your area. See if there's one within a few hours, a couple hours. 
right? Make a day of it. They only happen, you know, some of these clubs only run these things three, four times a year. So it's not like, all right, got to go to the weekly fish club meeting. By the way, and this is, I almost forgot this. Yes, you're going to save money going to the swaps. You want to know where you're going to save a whole lot more money? is joining these fish clubs and going to their monthly meetings if they're having oh, yeah. monthly meetings because often they've got like breeder awards programs which we call BAPs people are bringing in fish to sell you've got a relatively small audience and here's the thing a lot of times with these fish clubs you've got a lot of people who've kept pretty much everything so if they're bringing in a fish that they've just bred and they're going to bring them in smaller right so if it's a breeder awards program and let's say it's a cichlid right maybe you want you're looking for something you're not it, the selection is going to be small because it's whatever people are just breeding at the time or bringing in. You know, maybe you got small fish, little juveniles, but I can't tell you how many times I've picked up bags of really cool fish for like a dollar or two. I mean, one time I think oh, I picked yeah. up six electric blue acara and my, I might have like two bucks and they were probably an inch and a half or so. So it's like you can find some, uh, some good deals. The Crebenzis that are in your 20 long. I am fairly certain I paid a dollar and I got like eight decent sized crebenzas. Now those are common fish, but it could be a place where it could be really fun. My pea puppies came. They were, they were, uh, did you get them for a really good deal? I don't remember. remember. way back in the day? I, I don't remember. I miss my pea puppies. Yeah, they were great. Uh, systems. One of the things that you should begin to think about in terms of saving money, how many tanks do you have? Get rid of them all. It'll save you so much money. No, don't do that. Don't do that. We were just kidding. No. Forget I said that. How about we figure out a way to make that situation more efficient? So fish rooms, right? Obviously, we've got a fish room. A lot of the people you watch on YouTube probably have fish rooms. But it becomes very economical when you put those tanks in the same location because for us, what that means is it's a lot easier in terms of filtration. It's a lot easier to maintain temperature. So, filtration. Once you start getting past like six, eight tanks or so, and they're all in the same room, you could start looking at a central air system like we have, right? We've got an LPH65. That's a gemco.com central linear air piston pump. It's an awesome thing. That thing powers all the tanks downstairs in the fish room, which I don't know exactly. So it was four, five, six, seven, probably somewhere around 70 or so. And each one of those, almost all those tanks have, have sponge filters. Some have multiple. So I don't know exactly how many lines we're running through. At one point, I counted them, over 100 for sure. So this one system can run 80-something tanks. I don't have to have hang-on-back filters and canister filters. on all. The, I, there's no way I could do that. There's no way I could run individual filters on all the tanks that we have. I don't have enough power down there. I don't even think I would, even if I maxed out every circuit that I have available to me in the house... I don't know if I could run enough power down there to run filters for every single one of our tanks. And even if I could, I wouldn't want to see the electric bill at the end of the month with something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that that allows you to do when you've got your fish tanks in one place is now you might be able to consider heating the room instead of the individual tanks, which sucks away even more power. In our entire fish room downstairs, I think there are maybe four or five heaters running, and those just serve as backups. And some tanks that I know, if something happened and it got cold, those fish would experience some problems, like some of our Lake Tanganyika and cichlids. So we heat the room. Now we luck out because the heater, our furnace is in the fish room, and so we have one vent down there, and it keeps the entire fish room at 82, the entire, well, pretty much all winter. When it switches to summer, just the regular temperatures in the house and outside with the dehumidifier running still keeps it around 82. The only time we use a space heater is a little like right around now when it's, you know, maybe 60 degrees outside and it's not quite cold enough to get the heat to turn on here. We might use a space heater only when somebody's at home because we don't want to run those things when they're not. So those are ways you can save a lot of money on your utilities when you get to that critical threshold. And again, there are smaller linear air piston pumps, right? You don't need one that's going to run 80 tanks, right? Gemco, I know, sells smaller ones where you could definitely run six or eight, save a lot of money. Now, obviously, the downside is you got sponge filters in your tanks, right? You're running air, and that may not be something everybody wants to do. 
Last couple things, and then we're going to get to your questions, I promise. Yeah, jeez. Uh, I know we're talking a lot, but hey, you know what? We're trying to save money. That's the whole point. Uh, consumables, food, chemicals, buy in bulk, especially fish food, buy in bulk. You can put the stuff in the freezer. Uh, we do have a freezer. Actually, we've got two freezers downstairs. But even if you've got space in your just regular old kitchen freezer, that is a great way to save money. You can buy you know, a lot of you know, the North Fin products that we use. They sell them in, I think they're one pound buckets. Now for us, a one pound bucket only, believe it or not, lasts us like five days. I mean, we go through the stuff. And that, that's the flake food I'm talking about. They sell 500 gram uh, North Fin like pellets of all different sizes, right? For all different types of fish. We can easily go through a bucket and one of those packages a week in addition to the other foods that we feed. So often we'll bring in multiple, and you, I'm sure some of you have seen our Instagrams where we've got like buckets and buckets and buckets stacked high. Well, if you've only got a couple tanks, that's okay. What you can do is you can take a bucket, a one pound bucket, let's say that North Fin food, pour it in a smaller fish container or a Tupperware, put the rest of it in the freezer and just refill from that, that stock container. That stuff's good for months and months and months in the freezer, all right? The chemicals. Right. If you've got a lot of tanks, you could consider going to the dry powders because that stuff lasts a really long time and it, it doesn't really go bad. Right, Or buy larger containers. That should help bring the cost down. Salt. People ask about salt. I am having the hardest time remembering, and I, it almost just came to my brain. Do you remember the brand of salt that we use? We actually get it from Lowe's. It's water softener salt, and it's, it's, but it's pure sodium chloride. It's pure sea salt. What brand? No, I have no idea. Um, I don't remember the brand. It's it was, anyway. I did a video on how to save money on salt. It's I didn't link it in the description, but it's out there. Basically, you can get I don't remember what it was like fifty pound bag for like eight bucks. Morton? Uh, no, no, no. It was I can't remember for life of me. I can't remember what it was called. But like I said, I've got it. We've got a video out there. Check it out. You can save a ton of money. It's good for, we use it for live baby brine. If you need, to, if, you, if you're someone who puts salt in tanks because that's just what you do, you got brackish water maybe, it definitely can help. Oh, it's the blue bag, isn't it? It's the, uh, yeah. What is that? Oh, it's right there. I know. What is that called? Diamond crystal. Diamond, no, but there's another name for it. What is it? Solar naturals. Solar Naturals. Diamond that's, Crystal is prettier. Diamond Crystal is the company, but the Solar Naturals is what you'd want. Okay, uh, last thing. Mm. And this is something to consider if you're breeding fish. Try to breed fish that are going to be somewhat in demand by your local fish store. This is a whole separate subject, so I'm not going to get into this now. We've done it before. But if you are someone who breeds fish and can take them back to your local fish store and trade them for fish food or things that you need, that can certainly help a lot as well. So those are some of the things that we do. It's not, I don't know, probably every single thing on the face of the earth that can be done, but it certainly helps us keep prices down. Would you have a suggestion for um, planted tanks, uh, best light to save money? Best but light to save money depends on the size of the tank. So if I'm doing a smaller tank, like let's say a 20, a standard 20, a 20 long, so let's go 20, gallons or less i think a lot of the higher lights work the beams work lights are very bright and at least the smaller beams work lights have worked well for us Stop, i'll tell you right now stay away from the six footers we had four of the beams work six foot lights every single one of those things broke within a year and they all broke in different ways and they were complete garbage and i don't normally i'm not usually that hard on companies or brands because i don't like to do that not a chance, and it's one of the few things in the fish keeping hobby I would absolutely positively never buy again. And that's the six foot beams work lights. The rest of them work great. I had a lot of really good luck with the smaller ones. They're really bright. So that could be useful. The higher lights have a, in my opinion, a better color spectrum. Uh, maybe not quite as bright. Shop lights, if you got a four foot tank, you could certainly go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get shop lights. They've got the string LED lights that you can buy on Amazon too. Yeah. So. All options there. All right, let's see. So you wrote down all the super chats. Can we uh, mm -hmm. can we talk about those real fast? And did you write yeah. down the questions or no? Yeah. Uh, oh, all right. So. so the first one was from C Sin. Uh, Thank you. Super chat. Thank you very much. Blue Ram. Um, how do you get? Uh, uh, can you get uh, blue rams to thrive in seventy nine to eighty degrees? 
Um, I don't know about thrive. I, 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 that's that's within their range. Uh, I would prefer to keep them 82, 83, the, the German Blues, but 79 to 80, they're they're probably going to be okay, but not as happy as they could be. What else you got? Okay. Uh, Leo 209 Aquatics. Thank you. Thank you. You two got me addicted to Flip Aquatics. You're welcome. Well, that's you're not the only one. Take because a number. I find myself going on their website more than I should. Yeah, me too. And Especially now that they have tropical plants. Uh, I yeah. got to get me some. I just I got a, a video on those. big old box of the Northfin food today. I was so happy. It was like, oh. there's nothing better when you see that bad boy just sitting there like, oh, yeah. Let's see what we got going on today. You hear a lot of blub, blub, blub downstairs, fish yep. talking. The food's here. Uh, let's see. Um, ordering new fish for my Flex 15. It's either Panda Corys or Tetras with my new Hellboy from Lisa coming in. That's oh, a lot cool. of fun stuff going yep. on there in your tank. Cool. Uh, let's see. Chris G. Thank you very much. Um, Super chat. Thank you. Thank you. You two are the greatest people. You guys she's are the, the best. She's the greatest You're people. You're the greatest people. I'm just here existing. Thank you. Um, let's see. And then uh, Fish Fan 20 Gallon Long. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Hornwort. A question on Hornwort. Oh, you wanted to know if you could. <laughs> you didn't write the question down. No, I didn't because I knew I'd remember it because I had to do a plant. You almost didn't. No, I did. Okay. I'm just getting going. I'm, just give me a moment. Okay, all okay? right. Just you go ahead. I want to phrase it correctly so you don't laugh at me. All right. Um, I believe your question was, can you weigh it with, like, weights? Will it do okay and, and not plant it into the substrate? Well, my experience is I've tried. I've tried. Even I had, like, a kind of a bridge scape in the angel, in the angel tank, and I wanted to utilize hornwort. Yes, it floats along the top. It looks great. But I kind of looped it underneath, and I said, maybe it'll kind of, well, it eventually kind of dies off, and basically whatever it touches, and then it kind of tends to float. So sometimes you can kind of get away with, like, kind of having it float, like, down towards uh, the driftwood. That's really the best tip I could give you. Yeah, I agree. that The hornwort, for me, has never done something good when it's planted. It just rots at toward, and maybe some of you had a different experience. Maybe you did it differently, but it always just kind of rots and it floats back up. So I've just mm -hmm. resigned myself to knowing, Hornwort, you're going to float, and we're okay with that. Yeah. Sean has been a member for 17 months. Wow. Thank you. That's a long, that's a long time. It is. That's got to be, I know James has been here forever, but that's like really, I think, I don't, I can't remember when we started memberships, but it's got to be really close to then. Black Diamond Sand, I love the look of it. I have it in my Oscar and Jaguar tank and six other tanks and planted tanks and no problems. Yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of people in our fish clubs, GCCA especially, who use it all the time mm -hmm. and really there's not a lot of problems. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's just one of those things where it depends on the lot. It depends on... You probably if you have a lot of bottom feeders, if you yeah. got like quarries and another that like scrape. That could be. I don't know. Veronica. Welcome. Welcome to being a primetime partner, primate, prime timer. Glad you're here. Thank you. All right, let's 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 answer some questions. What do you got? Again. Oh, I did have, wait, I did have one that I didn't want to forget because it had to deal with, it has to do with one of your points. Oh, and that was well, from uh, DK right. Chef. How do you, like, find out about clubs and swaps? That's actually a really good question. Like, that if you is a great say, question. Hey. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think uh, Aquarium Co-op at one point had a list, a rather thorough list. Really? I don't remember. For like if, the U.S. of A? Yeah, the entire U.S. of A, at least the continental United States. Really? There was a pretty good list there. Huh. That's cool. Uh, the other thing that you could do is try to just Google fish clubs near me and see how that does. But yeah, I think there might have been. I think there might. I think you might have been compiling a list that was from a long time ago. So yeah, uh, let's see. Hold on. I was going to. Do okay. something here. Dustin says, do you all have a shrimp video? Yes, we have a couple of them. Uh, at least how to care for them. I only do Neocaridina because of our hard water with a higher pH, and they do quite well in our water parameters. So Neocaridina examples being, I did 
excuse me, I did a video where I um, focused on the cherry shrimp. I had another one where I did blue dream shrimp, but it's basically the same care. I just like the blue dream shrimp, so I'm like, hey, I'm going to do a video on this one too. But all the neocaridina, for the most part, are pretty much the care is the same. They're just different colors. So you got the blues, you got the reds, yellows, orange, all kinds of stuff, black. And yeah, they're fairly straightforward, pretty easy. All right. <laughs> Whips World says, Hey, Joanna, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, I might a little, I'm, I might have a little something, something for you. What? Really? I've been harping on him for some time because uh -oh. he has something that I want. It's and not I his hope... coffee mug, is it? Yes. Is it? I don't know if that's it. I don't want to make an assumption, mug. but it's like the coolest coffee mug in the world. He does have the coolest coffee mug ever. And just so you know, just like Spaceballs, I want all of it. I want the shirt. You want all the mer want merchandising, the, I, merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. I want it all. Whips World, the Hat. lunchbox. <laughs> Whips World, the tie. <laughs> BC Dolphin, thank you for the super chat. This question is for a beautiful birthday girl. Well, thank you. That, that, Let me get her on the phone. Hold on. Yeah. How long will it take Anubius roots solidly to solidly attach when put in a crevasse with no glue or binding? Oh, fun question. That's a good question. How long will it take? Well, they'll even go, those roots will even go into the substrate. I found some, oh my gosh, remember some of the ones that I pulled out where the roots are like literally like that long? Yeah, it's cool. Amazing. Roots are just as long as everything else. Amazing. How long? That's a really good question. I can't tell you exactly how long. Um, will they grow at the same rate as the plant? Probably similarly or slightly faster would be my guess. Um, but... Um, so if you wanted to say, my guess is why you're asking is maybe you want to attach it with something ugly that you don't really want to see, like a zip tie or something you want to know how long you can take, um, that you can wait to take that off. Maybe a month. I'm just ballparking maybe a month and it'll, it'll already be kind of somewhat little fingers like attached. It's amazing. To get them to really go, grow down I, six, eight months maybe, maybe longer sometimes if you want to really kind of just weave their way through all the rocks and eventually get into the, the yeah, substrate. I'm just thinking like yeah. a minimum amount of hold. Yeah, for sure. Like just yeah. with their little thingies. Yeah. Steel Waves, thank you for the super chat. Coming up on one year of fish keeping. That's cool, your fish Ooh. keeping anniversary. Your fish versary. <laughs> Have a three week old multi tank and found fry. Wanted to thank you for the knowledge, support, and joy you spread. Oh, well, thank you. Fun. And that's cool. I. I will always say this, and I'm sure many of you will agree when it comes to the fish keeping hobby, one of the most exciting things that you will see in fish keeping is when you go and look at your tank and you're like, oh, what Babies. is that little tiny fish looking back at me? The other day, no joke, no joke, bro, no joke. I was down in the fish room. I went to the 20 gallon long where the honey grommies are on the platies. Mm -hmm. And what do I see? Three. Tiny little platies swimming around. I forgot to tell you about that. Yeah, they're down there. When you go down there to feed your fish, go check them out because oh they're like gosh. really little. And they're mutts because we had a bunch of different platies in there. And so now they're oh, yeah, yellow right. <laughs> and they've got black uh, tail fins. Oh. But they're all, you know, they just their little tails are going so fast when it's time to eat. They're all excited. They're like little bitty fish kids. <laughs> so if you've never had a chance to breed fish, so I fun. highly recommend it. I think you'd have a lot of fun. It's a good time. All right, what do we got Oh, and here? There, there was a suggestion. I, I didn't write down who it was. Uh, suggested uh, Quickrete pool filter sand from Lowe's. Quick now, I think Crete the brand that we've previously sand. gotten when, was from Menards. All Menards, yeah. Because tip, typically what happens with the pool filter sand is we inevitably need to buy it in the middle of winter. When around these parts in the Chicagoland, all the pools would be frozen solid. So I don't know why, what it is with Menards. It's always like... You guys got pool filter sand? Oh, yeah, way back there in the corner, there's a big old skid. And yeah. sure enough, there's a big old skid of pool filter sand. So maybe yeah. the other stuff works Who better. Who it in the winter? I do. Other than fish keepers. They always look at me really weird, like, yeah, I'm going swimming. I don't really care what the temperature Setting is Setting up outside. the pool. Oink Master says, thank you for easing my worries about adopting the guppy colony. Hopefully, That's I'll fun. be picking them up this week. My relative... My relative having a heart attack was the most important thing this week. Well, he absolutely oh. it is. I'm sorry to hear that. So hopefully everything's okay. Yeah. Um, but definitely family, family first, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me see here. 
I am scrolling around. B O B one oh one. What's up? I haven't seen you around for a while. Glad you're here. In your experience keeping shell dwellers, have you noticed them burying their dead in the shells? In their shells. I have never seen that. But I also can't say that I've been looking for it and like keep in mind. Like where's I mean, Joe? Yeah, we where's we're Joe? in some ways we can be really bad resources because A when we're dealing with these colonies, there are, I don't know what the max number of Shelleys, of Maltese have been in that 50 gallon low boy. I wonder. Here's what I do know. Lately, we've been pulling out 20, 30 at a time, once or twice a month. And that colony is still probably got a hundred fish in there. So I am guessing, just ballparking it. I'm just spitballing here. But max in that 50 gallon, Easily goes four to five hundred, and in our forty-gallon breeder, I would say there's another couple hundred at least. The reason I mention all that is I would never notice if one fish is missing and if they packed it in the shell, <laughs> because I, I don't think I can. Do count they look them all. around before they do it and then? Um, but I don't know. I've never seen that. I, I don't. I can't imagine they would because they use the shells as homes, and that would be a rotting corpse in their home. <laughs> I don't know if they like unless you unless your shell dwellers are a little. Messed up in the brain case. I have a great idea. Okay. I got lots of great ideas. They're pretty weird, but this one would be super helpful. All right. You know how you have those handy dandy things that can like measure walls and stuff. It's just like a scanner. Um, and you just, and it says, oh, that wall is seven feet, five inches, whatever. It's the same thing. You go whoop, over your fish tank and it counts how many fish are in there. That'd be pretty cool. I'd like that. I'd buy one of those. So I'd buy I. the fish. I'd buy the automatic fish I would fish just counter. be, because then we could t take inventory. Like say, how many fish do you have? And we could actually count. You know, so the nerd in fun. me, and I don't know how many people here will get this. Probably not a lot because it's just ultra nerdy. In biology, there's something called a flow cytometer. And basically, it's a really skinny little tube and you can run cells through it. And this tube is about the width of a single cell. So they run individual, like a single file. And there's a light. And it shine every and there's a detector on the other side and the light shines through, but every time there's shade, it knows there's oh. a cell there. Oh. So I was wondering maybe there's a fish flow cytometer. How Do cool they that use be? one of those in Ghostbusters? No. They use something I don't sounds think, like that. I'm not even sure those would have been around back then. Uh, Mars, what can cause a bristlenose pleco to die? Lots of things. So first of all, if your bristlenose pleco died, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of things can happen. One, when they're small, this is just generally speaking, not just bristlenose plecos, but when fish are smaller, when they're juveniles, regardless of the fish, they are going to be more susceptible to changes in water parameters, changes in temperature. Sometimes fish with bad genetics, they don't really show those bad genetics until they start to grow up a little bit longer and they've got a shortened life. So it could just be that. It might not have been anything you did. If your water, you know, if you're testing your water parameters, you're like, okay, I didn't have any ammonia, I didn't have any nitrite. If either one of those things were there, that could have certainly been a cause. My nitrates were 20 parts per million or less. If it was, you know, one, two, 300 parts per million, that could have been a cause. What was my temperatures? Were my temperatures acceptable? For bristlenose plecos, they can go down into the upper 60s without any issues. So I've done that many times before. They can go up to 80, 82. So they have a wide range of temperatures. So if they were in that range, that's probably okay. Often what I think could be a, a big contributing factor is were they getting enough food? So a lot of people buy algae eating type fish, whether that's otos, bristlenose, mystery snails, you name it. Anything that's supposed to eat algae, if there isn't enough algae for them to eat, sometimes we forget we have to feed them. Usually with bristlenose plecos, the way to do that is to feed the bristlenose pleco after the lights go off so that there's not a lot of competition from the rest of the fish that are going to eat so much faster than them usually. So that could be one of the things, as well as water parameters. But if your water parameters aren't checked, sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's just bad genetics, and there's, there's not a lot we can do. Hi. Hi. All right. From uh, Luis500, this is a good question. Um, let's see. HOB, uh, HOB or sponge filters, which saves more money? Hang on bags or the sponge? It, it, Oh, hey, uh, the sponge filters, if you are running all the sponge filters from one pump, there's no doubt about it. Because the hang on back, you've got that single pump with that impeller that's, that's being powered to move that water. 
with the sponge filters, if you're running multiple sponge filters to multiple tanks using one pump, then you've only got that one thing drawing a current. So it's, it's a massive savings for us with that LPH65 that's running 70 something tanks downstairs and the hang on backs are just there for mechanical filtration. Lynn says, have Hydra in my guppy fry, 10 gallon. <laughs> we were feeding a lot of baby brine shrimp. We stopped yeah. for a few days and hmm. added snails. Help some, but I want to go back to live baby brine. Any advice? You're not getting rid of those bad boys, the Hydra, until the live baby brine is a thing of the past for that tank. It's frustrating. I've dealt with it for years and years and years, and it is like clockwork. What I will say is if you can cut back on the live baby brine and just do the best job you can of trying to add live baby brine that the fish will consume and not have it be floating. It's very hard to do and not have it be floating around the tank excessively. But as long as you feed the live baby brine, you're probably going to have hydra there. The, the problem is with baby guppies, it's not like you can put other fish in to eat the hydra, right? So some of the dwarf grommies, maybe honey grommies will pick at the hydra sometimes. I found snails to be marginal with the hydra. I, I didn't ever find them to really put a huge dent in it. Although I never tried, I don't know if it would work, but I, I, I wonder if assassin snails would be a better option for that. I haven't tried it, but I'm just thinking off the top of my brain and I don't know, but it, there, it's probably going to be there until the live baby brine goes away. The nice thing with the, the guppy fries, if you crush up the flake, Sometimes the live baby brine isn't necessary. You got some? Um, oh, B101 said, I ditched all social, social social media for a while, but I missed talking to you guys. Well, I'm glad you're uh, back. That's why I said, I, yeah. I, I remember that you were here, and now that you're back, I'm like, oh, a nice where break. you been? Spinster sister, what is your opinion on preceded filters for brand new fish keepers? Hmm. Preceded filters. I needed a drink of water. Um, so I'm a big fan of having used filter media uh, to start a new tank. I think that is the number one bestest way to get a tank up and running and minimize your issues, provided that you are stocking the new tank very lightly and very slowly at the beginning. Because in your established tanks, your beneficial bacteria are not just in your filter media, they're all over the surfaces of your tank. When we just transfer the filter media and think, oh, well, this 29 gallon had 30 fish in it, I'll pull the filter media out, stick it in this new 29 gallon so I can add 30 fish, you're going to have an ammonia spike because we're not accounting for all the beneficial bacteria that was throughout the rest of the tank. However, you take that use filter media out of that established 29 gallon and the filter media has been there for at least four to six weeks, put it in your new tank. Can you add five or six fish that are similarly sized to the original tank? Sure. Probably not have any issues at all. So the preceded filters for brand new fish keepers. Yeah, I, I love it. I think it would avoid help new fish keepers avoid a lot of problems because unfortunately, uh, sometimes a lot of people, they go out and they're just, it's, it's a somewhat impulse buy. They get the tank, they get it set up the, that day or the next day they're going back and start adding fish because it's fun. That's the whole point of having a fish tank. And that's one of the biggest issues we deal with in the comments that we get is, oh my gosh, my ammonia is spiking. Oh my gosh, my nitrite is now spiking. What do I do? I'm losing fish. They're getting sick. They're getting ick. And it's a disaster and it causes so much stress. And back to my original comment at the beginning of the live stream if the average new fish keeper stays in the hobby for six months, I I would be willing to bet a big part of that is the first couple months was a disaster for a lot of people who didn't get a chance to do the research on the nitrogen cycle and quarantining fish. You solve those two issues, you solve 90% of the problems. You got something? Um, yeah, this is... Uh, from Leo 209 Aquatics. Can the... Uh, the award, um, can the, the award emerald rasboras handle 6.5 pH? Dwarf emerald rasbora? Yes, probably that's probably oh, yeah. the question. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, they they would probably do better in a six and a half than they are in I mean in terms of where their natural water parameters are closer to new, new, uh, neutral. We're keeping them at an eight. They do great at a pH of eight, but I, I, my guess is they would be even happier at a six and a half to a seven. For sure. Let's see here, DK Chef. I keep two assassin snails with my nearites, mystery snails. Uh, Pagoda snail and rabbit snail, they help control all the smaller snails. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm trying to think at one point, and again, I don't necessarily, I'm not going to guarantee you're not going to have any issues, but full-sized mystery snails, I think at one point I accidentally had them in with some assassin snails, and I don't remember there being an issue. Now, again, I'm not saying that you're not going to have an issue. The assassin snail can be like, I'm going after that big one over there. Watch this. And it happens. Wait, I have a quote for everybody. Oh, boy. It's, it's been dying. I've been dying. I, you can't say it. You can't say what it is. You never do. Hey, Dale, what kind of cuckoo brain keeps a cactus in her purse? I hate that movie. I know you do. I was watching it the other day. Uh, we got a, we, we got a, we finally got a TV in the living room. We haven't had one down there for like two or three years. And we're just like, all right, we need to get one so we can watch family movie time. And it was, uh, That's, it was on Amazon Prime, the movie I think. movie is yucky. It's, 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 a, it's a classic. It's just, you hey, know what? Dale. I don't like... What well, kind of cuckoo brain keeps a cactus I was in her just purse? I say who I don't like. No, you can't say. Otherwise, there. people are going to know. Let's see here. What do we got going on here? Um, Lewis 500, do you believe rainbow shiners could deal with Montreal winter? <laughs> I don't. Uh, in nature? <laughs> Probably not. I think, I mean, their natural habitat is down in the United States southeast, like Florida, Georgia ish, Tennessee, maybe. I don't know if they can do i don't know enough about them to, i don't think they could do like water ice on the top maybe but i'm not sure did anybody get it nobody nobody got the movie quote yet oh man oh, disappointing it's an older movie you don't you don't need to see the movie yeah well i didn't say people need to it's see it on a must not see list oh whatever <laughs> what oh actually a lot of your favorite movies are on that list hey hmm. nobody asked you to talk <laughs> Nobody asked you to talk on your birthday. You, you know what? We're going to play a new rule. It's called birthday being quiet. Oh, Alice <laughs> no. B, you are... Boom. Alice really? B was close. She said Fight Club. You had the right actor, wrong movie, and Brad then Pitt. Spinster Sister came up with California and even spelled it right. Oof. That's impressive. I'm sorry I'll for both you, of you. I'm a, and there's a whole bunch. Fish Fan 20 Gallon Long, Blood Worms coming in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of you. Um, yeah, you know, Brad Pitt... And in his day, you know, you had California and Fight Club, and some of these movies were just like mind blowing. They were, and and the other one that I really like, Twelve Monkeys. Twelve Monkeys is a great movie. That's a really great movie. You know what? He's just he's right up there in my book, right down there in my book, right along with Tom Cruise. They're both. Now, what if Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise like aquariums, and they're watching? You just hurt their feelings. <laughs> like they'd be Tom. watching us. Look, we just lost two viewers because of that. <laughs> yep. Wouldn't that be funny if our stuff I, down I think it would be funny if They're Brad like, Pitt just commented down even. there. Yeah, this is Brad Pitt. I'm sorry you don't like my movie. <laughs> I was going to, you know, I don't know. Finn, Finn Wiggles. Wiggles. We both saw it at the same time. Did you know, Finn, Finn Wiggles, Wiggles, we were just talking about you last week. We actually, all of us, whoever was here in, in the whole thing, we were lamenting the fact that we hadn't seen Finn Wiggles. And I actually asked everybody last week if you saw the, the um, live stream. I'm like, I wonder where Finn Wiggles is. She hasn't been around in a while. We missed you. Like, Aww. for real, we missed you. Like, Thanks, it's just, Finn. I'm glad you're here. Oh, happy really birthday glad. to me. That, yeah, that and, just made her day. And also, real. thank you to, very much to everybody who is writing happy birthdays. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I've never received so many happy birthdays in my entire life. Nope. That's so cool. So cool. Yeah. Thank you, you. thank you. Glad you're here. Glad you're back. It's been a while. It's been a, it's been too long. <laughs> so glad you're here, uh, Dakota. Can you keep Firemouth con Firemouth convicts and hold on? No, all the words are running together. <laughs> Print this can in a you? seventy-five gallon aquarium. Hold on. So fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume you said Firemouth and convicts. So if it's Firemouth and convicts in a seventy-five. Yeah, maybe you're gonna get some lip locking every once in a while, and that could be disconcerting. Sometimes a little bit more than lip locking. I, you want to avoid as many problems as possible. 
don't get more than one of each because if they start to breed, you're going to have problems because neither one of them are going. There we go. Yes, yeah, Firemouth and Comics. Just do one of each, right? And then you could put other fish in there too. That might work. I've had them together before, but I didn't have a situation where I had more than one where they could have paired up and then started breeding because of that then gets very difficult to manage. Not just for the fire mouth versus the convict, but anything else that's in there when they start to pair up and like, oh yeah, this is ours now. Yep. There, there was, oh. Thank you for the super chat. Do snails need calcium added to the tank to keep their shells strong? What are the techniques that you use for your snails? So we luck out in that our water is naturally hard. So our GH and KH are each at least 10 degrees. Our pH is an 8.2. So that all works out for really well for our snails. But even with that, when they start to breed and they do start to pull the, the minerals out of the water, I've mentioned this before, uh, Cats Aquatics, K-A-T-S, Cats Aquatics. Uh, she's a young lady. I, I don't know. She's 19 or 20 years old. She, I've mentioned this story a few times. She developed a snail food with her biology a and p teacher in high school they started a business and now she's at the aqua shells i'm just i'm really proud of her because she's there's, it's very rare that you meet young people that driven and now her products are being sold all over the place uh, flip aquatics sells cats aquatics snail foods so definitely something to consider again what i typically do when feeding snails is that's best done with the lights off because they're going to be searching for food all night you don't really want the fish picking at all their food. And the next thing you know, it's like, well, the fish had a good meal. But what I like about the cat's aquatic stuff is not only does it have the minerals, but it also has actual calories and nutrients for the snails that they need too in the, the vegetable matter. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I've, yeah. got a, I've got a fun uh, um, Instagram i got to post. All right. It always reminds well, me. I'm going to write that we'll down. We'll be looking forward to that one, Greg. What well, about our Instagram hmm? hashtag? I, I, we have to figure that out with your okay. little hashtag thing. All right. Keith, thank you very much for the super chat. I noticed Flip Aquatics indicates RODI water for all Neocaridina shrimp. How essential is this? I have hard water here, but don't want to shell out for an RODI system. I, I, I don't blame you. For Neocaridina, I don't use it ever. I just use tap water. And... Our, like I said, our tap water, 10 degrees GH, KH, pH is an 8 to an 8.2. And that has always done very well for us now. But what you have to consider is, and you know what, no. We have gotten plenty of Neocaridina from Flip Aquatics, and I just added them to our, I'm not saying not going to have problems if you do this, but for us, we just added them the way we would add fish. Make sure that their temperature acclimated if they didn't come in breather bags. If they did come in breather bags, I put them down in the fish room and make sure the water is equal to, you know, basically the room. And then they go in and we haven't had any problems. Caridina, I know he's a big fan of the RODI for the Caridina and I would be reluctant to put those fish in our tap water. Although you do have some in have, our tap water. I have one. One. I have no, one. I thought you had two. Do I have two? You have two. There's two down there. Yeah, in the kitchen tank. And yeah, the, the uh, dwarf tank. emerald reds are the uh, yeah, emerald maybe. breast boards. Yeah, two. Yeah, there's two in there. But for the most part, the caridinas, I know, and like the Taiwan bees, and they're really, and I'm not a shrimp. In the, listen, if you're doing shrimp and, and Rob tells you to do something a certain way, he's the authority, not me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am very comfortable saying that he's got the experience of bringing in millions of shrimp, and I don't. So I've bred Neo Caridina, I've kept them in our water. But yeah, it's it's something you could you could certainly email him, and I'm sure he would give you more direction too. Killer Kitty 08 is in the house. What? What's up? It's all star cast. Yeah. Hi to everybody, everyone. Hi, driving Kitty. home, well, driving home, while I listen to the King and Queen of Q Q Q. What is that? Cool. Um, cool. Uh. Yeah, I'm not familiar with all the slang spellings. Can you use pond plants sold at big box garden centers in an aquarium? By the way, loved your many tips video, Joanna. So helpful. The tips that just never ended. That is so, yeah. I know, right? So pond Oof. plants in an aquarium. That's funny you ask because I did briefly, as I was blabbering on about plants, I was thinking, you know, I wonder if I should mention, because you actually can find some 
creeping jenny but um and then uh, what else do i get the pond plant that, you, that i actually want to put in a, a tank that i'll be starting at some point here um the horse horsetail rush um that one looks really really cool popping out of an aquarium um and you can save uh, a decent amount of money because you could be like creeping jenny you can get for like three bucks or something but it's not really the same kind generally speaking it'll be like growing out of the tank or kind of like growing by and then kind of in, it's not it, it's not an aquatic plant necessarily um so i don't i i don't think that i can speak enough to which plant so i, I kind of wanted to hold off on that so those are the only two that i really I'm familiar enough. Would you put those in the tank no, or floating that's what I'm out? Okay, so yeah, so they're basically the pond plants out. are floating no matter what. Kind of, yeah. You're not submerging them. No. Okay, yeah, because except the um, horsetail rush, yeah, it's actually planted inside the tank and it grows. But out. it, but its leaves and stuff would have to still get atmospheric CO2, which, by the way, is often the reason why some plants grow out of the water and some plants grow in water is how easily can they exchange gases like obtain co2 and then of course their osmoregulation is the water can they keep the water out of their cells in fresh water so mm -hmm. some struggle yeah. with that david thank you for the super chat hey guys glad i catch a live stream question i would like to change my substrate i know it can disturb the cycle adding turbo start and what else should i add or worry about thank you Okay, that's a good question. I like that question. Um, changing out the substrate, for us, that means a total tank breakdown. Um, what we're doing at that point is I'm taking my tank, I'm pulling all the plants, all the rocks, all the wood, all the decorations go out. Then I drain the tank about halfway and the fish come out. Now the fish usually wind up in a, a tote, right? So whatever size tote you need, we use 27 gallon totes. Usually what I do is I will put fresh dechlorinated tap water in that tote the day before and bring it up to temperature so that it's the same temperature as the tank water. You do not need tank water. There's nothing beneficial in your tank water that's gonna help this situation because the only thing in your tank water is nitrate and nitrate is of no benefit. A lot of people wonder, hey, is there beneficial bacteria in the tank water? Not really. The beneficial bacteria are attached to surfaces. So. If you have that tote set aside for your fish, the stuff that you pull out, so you're, if you, especially if you've got like fake plants, wood, rocks, if you can put that into that tote, if there's space, that will keep everything submerged so that any beneficial bacteria there, especially if you're running an air stone into that tote, they should be relatively okay. Fish go in, drain the water the rest of the way. Usually I'm gravel vacuuming whatever substrate's in there if it was gravel. Now I'm tanks drain scooping all the substrate out new substrate goes back in and then i start putting all my decorations back in by the way if you've got filtration if you've got media you really want to try to keep that exposed to water if it's a hang on back filter depends on how long this process takes if you're looking at hey i can get this done in an hour then just leaving the filter maybe hanging on the side of your tote you don't even have to necessarily turn it on if it's a canister filter there's less oxygen there that stuff will start to die sooner if it's a sponge filter, then that's what I'm using inside my tote and just running some air to that. So that's how I roll with it. And then it does minimize the issues, right? So your beneficial bacteria is still okay for the most part in your media. It's still present on the surfaces of the decorations. Unless you plan to, to replace those as well, then obviously you won't have that benefit. We've done it a number of times. I generally, for the most part, don't notice any problems doing it that way. So hopefully that helps keep Thank you for the super chat again. By the way, our super chat's consistent with the theme of tonight's stream. Are they consistent with the theme? Oh, like money saving? Money saving? That's sure. funny. You know, wouldn't that be funny if like for, for night you, you set a maximum, like 50 cents max? <laughs> I that don't would, know if we're of, I like I the layer of that. interest. Yeah. Uh, Corleone. Thank you for the super chat. It was a spooky scene. I can send a picture. Wait, what was a spooky scene? Did I miss something? What's a spooky scene? Wait. Oh, here we go. Oh. Wait, I'm reading okay. backwards. A few weeks ago, I asked you all about a weird white substance covering my fish and plants. You all said to remain calm. Next day, it was all gone. Thank you. Yeah, that white film. 
It sometimes it just comes on by and then it goes away. I missed a bunch of super chats wow. over here. But yeah, I'm glad everything worked out okay. And the spooky scene went away. Phew. J Dub, appreciate the super chat. Happy birthday, Joanna. That's you. Thank you. Enjoyed meeting both of you in Orlando. I'm on my second batch of Mbuna Fry wow. running out of tanks. That's, oh boy. That's cool. So money saving tip. Wait for the dollar per gallon sale. Wait for a uh, look at Craigslist. Get some more tanks. Breed you some more Mbuna. I'm sure it'll be fun. I love breeding them because I just take the female, throw her in a 10-gallon tank, let her spit her fry out when she's ready. And it's just so cute watching them all swim around. Mm, They're like little, little baby fish. Little baby adults. They get all they get just as excited as the adults when it's time to eat. As <laughs> soon as they learn, oh, that big giant monster thing, when it walks up the tank, it drops food in here. Mm -hmm. Like the shirt excited. that people wear, the fish food god or something, and the fish food something like that. Is that, is that a shirt? Yeah, I've it's never a shirt. Seen it's that really shirt. funny. Yeah. Is it cool? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Poet. Po. Wait, no, no, no. Poet song? Poetic song? What is that? My eyes are... Where are you? Right there. Right there. Poetic song, 725. Uh, I'd get it eventually. Uh, hoping to meet y'all at Aquashella Dallas. Well, I hope so, too. So cool. just stop on by. Say yeah. hello. That's coming up in August. So it's the first weekend in August. I don't remember exactly the dates right now. It's like the 5th or 6th, whatever the first weekend mm. is. But, yeah, it's coming up in the not-too-distant future. Looking forward to hanging out with everybody. Miles, my moss, marimal, marimal? Marimal moss ball. Moss ball carpet won't stop purling. Also, I never mm. did a water change. Why? Why is it purling? It's happy. It usually happens more at CO2. But, yeah. hey, if it's doing that, good for you. I, didn't, I don't know if I've ever seen them purl. Usually they don't. At least the ones that we've had. I don't think so, right? You said you haven't done a water change. Usually, mm -hmm. so a lot of times when you do a water change, plants will pearl. Will, will pearl. It's like, oh wow, this is cool. They're really happy. Mm -hmm. it's, sometimes it just has to do with the amount of oxygen and stuff going into the new water. So, into the tank from the new water. Um, Finn Wiggles uh, says, "Got to get my latest dig into uh, Joanna here. I just got the Hydra Stream tank." Ooh. Now I have the puddle broken stream. LOL. All low boys in this house. I'm jealous. Oh I am gosh, eyeing collecting the low puddle. Boys? I'm eyeing the puddle. I want the puddle really bad. Oh my gosh. Finn, when are you going to an aquashella? And thank you, by the way, for the flying oh. person thing. The flying bean person it's a guy. Little pear guy. Flying pear guy. Thank Call you. Call my pear. Yep. He's cute. Y'all, all all y'all need to make it to an aqua shell. How cool would that yeah, how cool would it be gosh. if it was all of you? And we could all hang out. That would be awesome. Well, I wish I, we could like zoom and like have like everybody's picture. Wouldn't that be totally cool? A zoom would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We might have to so yeah. That that thought has, has not not a zoom, but at some point when we get to a point where like they do that metaverse thing, how cool would it be if we could all meet in the metaverse but like like actually walk around together That's in weird. the thing. I no, know. I don't I These can't are put the types my... of weird thoughts that I have. Like what, what if we did a live stream in the metaverse? How cool would that be? I can't wrap my head around the metaverse. Of course, then we'd all probably, yeah, but then we'd all get addicted to it or something because they're talking about how like it, you, people will get addicted to the metaverse and then we won't be able to then, leave and it'll just be one like giant long stream. And then all of our fish will probably die because nobody wants to leave the metaverse to take yeah, care of fish just be and like keeping, go to jobs and yeah, get like, sleep. I got this new metaverse fish. Thanks it's a lot, got Prime six time. eyes. Oh my God. What should I feed him? Like, I don't know. I've never had a six-eyed fish in the metaverse. What am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, it could be. It could get really weird. Hmm. All right. I don't know. Fitting with those Aquashella Boston. You know, the, the, yeah, they need to do something in the northeast corner of the world here of the United States. Lynn's asking me about, again about the uh, diamond head neons at Flip Aquatics. The pics do not do them justice. You yeah, check them out. Cool. I didn't look at them because I was like, oh. I saw them, I think it was last week. They're really cool. Oh. Shannon. Elephant, what? Elephant, Elephant King Superb. superb. Oh, okay, oh, I'm sorry. Elephant King Superb asked, is taking breaks from the hobby necessary? What's what keeps you guys going strong? Have you guys ever hit a plateau? We would love to know your thoughts. That's a great question. Thanks, Shannon, for sending oh, yeah. that. Uh, for uh, sending that. That's a great question. Uh, is it necessary? It's necessary if you need it. If the hobby stops being a source of enjoyment and a source of fun, stop doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a firm believer in 
the, so I haven't had a break in a, a very, very, very long time. So basically, I started keeping fish when I was six, had them pretty much the entire time I was a kid into my teenage years, into my early 20s. I, when we met, I still had, I still had the tanks. That was basically at that point in my mid 20s. The only time I didn't have tanks is when we moved in here for the first couple of years. Maybe, because I know we had some smaller tanks. Remember, we had those littler ones yeah. floating around up here. It mm -hmm. might have been a year after we moved in here, maybe two years at the most. Oh, I think it was I think it was about a year because then I started putting small tanks up here. And then once I got the floor in the basement done, because I tiled the floor, uh, then it was game on. Then we started adding a lot more tanks again. But I, I haven't taken any breaks because I enjoy it. But I can promise you this, if it ever came to a point where it was something where I wasn't, it, it was turning into too much of a job, I would stop because I still go down in the fish room and I still like walking around and looking at all the different setups that we have going on. I like looking at all the fish. And in, in some ways it gets more difficult when you have as many tanks as we do to thoroughly enjoy and get to know each tank. And that is a downside. That's a definite downside when you start adding more tanks because when I had six or eight tanks, I could tell you every thing about those tanks. I could tell you what the fish were going to do, how they interacted with one another, who liked who, who was running the tank, all this kind of stuff. And you lose a little bit of that as you add more tanks. And we've been this... The only reason we added more in the last year was strictly to so that when we brought fish in, we had these were more or less quarantine tanks. So I, we have definitely reached a limit as to how many tanks we want to comfortably keep in terms of maintenance and in terms of just how many more can you add before you really can't enjoy the ones you've got. So uh, if you, you know, if, if you're out there and you need a break, take a break. Right? There's nothing wrong with breaking the tanks down, getting the fish into good homes, and coming back to it in a year or so. Uh, what keeps you guys going strong? I just, it's just a hobby I've always really enjoyed. I don't know what keeps you going strong. Plants. Plants. Green ants. <laughs> Aquascaping. Oh, and and I think if you ever get like bored or frustrated, just clean your tank really well. Do it, do like a refresh. It's really exciting. Yeah. If that doesn't work, go to like a show, like a Aquashella. Uh, go hang around with other fish nerds and you'll get like other ideas like they're or they're really excited about this or that or look at plants or uh, yeah just look aquascapes usually that's, sucker me right back in that that's a, actually a really good point too. Or, or just look at a surface in your house that doesn't have a tank on it bam there you go <laughs> bob's your uncle you're back in the hobby maybe that's not a great idea um <laughs> Two things that you mentioned that I th thought are interesting. Thing number one is be careful, though, in all seriousness. If you're finding yourself losing excitement for the hobby, sometimes people want to compensate for that by adding more. Like, well, you know what? The reason why I'm just not as excited is I haven't had any new fish in a while, and I haven't had any new fish in a while because I'm out of tanks. That's great. But when you add that next tank and you add more fish, what did you just do, right? For you, is it now more work? And then in two months when that tank is filled and you're bored with that, now you've still got all that work to do? Is that frustrating you? Is that stressing you out? Then that's the wrong way to go. But you brought up another really good point, and that is being around people, having this, right, where we can hang out and talk about fish, the aquashellas i cannot tell you how energizing those oh, are yeah just fun. being around like-minded people people who enjoy the hobby the ideas that happen the conversations about breeding the conversation about oh i've cut these fish together and just cultivating that that community is, is a lot of fun the the fish clubs are huge they uh, are just they're a lot of fun where you can go out on a you know, back when Greenwater did their stuff on Friday night, it was like the number one thing every month I look forward to is yeah, being able to go fun. there on a Friday night, hang out. They would have a meal, usually like somebody would cook, you know, and bring crock pots and stuff and have a small little presentation. And then you, you sit around at a table and just talk about fish and what you're doing. And it's 
Yeah, it, part of it's the people and being around others when possible mm -hmm. that also share your hobby. Just, you know, the diamond blue tetra. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that you now that a thing? Look? Yeah, it's like the neon. So it is, the neon it's a variation got... of the neon, but it doesn't have a stripe along the side. And it's got like a it's blue. It's got blue eyeshadow. It's got like a blue diamond tetra. on its forehead. I want that. It's the, they should have called it the 1980s Tetra because it's that got blue cool. eyeshadow over its eye. You see how creative I can be? Yeah, that's its new name, the 80s Tetra. I could never pull off blue eyeshadow. It was, it was so frustrating. It was hard every, for me too. Every single sleepover that, you know, everybody yeah. do in the grade school, I always tried. Nope, yeah. Debbie Hoppy could. That, no. yeah, I couldn't do blue Joe eyeshadow. Could. I couldn't crimp Not my me. hair. I burned it all off. That's why I'm this way. <laughs> uh, Kendra, thank you so much for the... The little sticker, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Same thing with Corleone. Appreciate the flower. You got a flower. Oh, that's pretty. I love flowers. You got a flower. And oh my goodness, Danica and Aquatics. 13 months you've been a member. Wow. That's a long time. You're old school. Where did that year go? LOL, oh, well, what's up? What's up? Sure. I know. Time flies and it only goes by faster the older you get. <laughs> Pretty soon you find yourself like, what the heck? Where's my life gone? <laughs> That's how you say that. It's just like that, huh? Where's my life done gone? Okie dokie. Aaron, does Aquashella come to Charlotte or other East Coast? Well, it's Florida. It's in Orlando. It was there in February. Don't know where it's going to be in, I mean, don't know what month, but I'm assuming you're going to be, there will be another Aquashella Orlando. So that's not too far from you. I mean, if we're driving down from Chicago, my guess is you could make it from Charlotte to Orlando. A lot faster than we can make it to Chicago, from Chicago to Orlando. I'm just throwing it out there for you. A little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think you could do it. Let's do that. Duke Aquarium says aquascaping is so therapeutic. Yes, it is. I'm just going to take your word for it because it's just not my jam. It's not therapeutic to me. It stresses me out, and that's why I don't do it. Because you I can't. pile rocks really well. Yeah, but that's, yeah, I, I suppose. Lucas says, need a convention here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Highest concentration yeah. of fish keepers in the USA. Is that true? I don't know if that's true or not. Are you just are you just uh, making up some stats to get an know. aquarium convention by you? Sounds pretty solid. Is that solid. what you're doing? I love uh, Pennsylvania. I will say that, you know, when we go to... So you're not that far. I mean, Pennsylvania's got stuff, right? They have the big fish deal. And... Um, oh, oh, uh, the, the uh, OCA isn't that far from you. A lot of people come from Pennsylvania and, and do then, the Ohio Cichlid Association extravaganza. What's the one that they have in the fall that doesn't uh, Pennsylvania have? Um, no. But that's saltwater, I think. No, it has a fun name. Big fish deal? No. Small fish deal? No. Medium fish deal? Uh-uh. The fish aren't a deal? No. But they're medium. And they're big. No. I don't know. I'm sure somebody um, here knows. Remember the posters? We're all out at the OCA. No, no, I don't. Wait, it just it just that flew by my head. Ago. It just went. Uh huh. Lisa went to it. Yes, she did. She went to a show. Don't remember what it was called. You sure, um, it's not the big fish deal. No, it's um. Dang it! Somebody help You're me out. You're not really all that useful on a live stream when you've had no sleep. I'm just gonna throw that out there There's, for you. Did, there are Your things that you sentence fragments and <laughs> sputtering of vowels is not helping the situation. It's it's but a it's okay. fish we thing you. in Pennsylvania. I'm all I'm right. almost. Or maybe it's Jersey. Well, that was the aquatic experience back in Jersey. No, not Jersey. Um, it's, no, it's not in the Carolinas. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's anyway, Pennsylvania. You keep thinking. Fish Keystone Clash. Oh, my See? gosh. There you go. Thank you. Uh, all right. So everybody, Pennsylvania? Everybody who's listening in the replay, I want to apologize. I'm sorry. For her screaming I'm in so your excited. ear. I, I just felt validated you just, right there. You probably, anybody who's just listening to this with headphones on is now completely <laughs> deaf. And because the audio thing is weird, you come through louder on one side, their really? one ear is going to be just annihilated. We're sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive her. Okay, I'm back. Fish fan 20 gallon long. Thank you very much for the super chat. He was always a rather stupidly optimistic man, and I mean, I'm afraid it, it came as a great shock to him when he died. What movie? Oh, my gosh. Wait. He was, all right, so here it is right here. He was always rather stupid. I'm afraid, I'm afraid it came as a great shock to him when he died. Oh, oh. That sounds vaguely somewhat familiar like I've seen that movie. I'm going to have to think on that one a minute because I don't know, but you're going to have to tell us. Because it would be something that would have been narrated, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. 
Wow, look at that. Carly on, thank you Aww. for the super sticker dancing yeah, dancing so puppy. Is that a dancing puppy? Like a fox or a cat? Tell. A dancing fox cat puppy. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let me see what we got going on here. Yeah, Link Master nailed the Keystone Clash too. Yeah. Let's see here. Johan, Johan. All right, I always mess this up. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. Um, you you told us how to pronounce your yeah, name you did. way back when. Yep. It's I been remember. a while. Hey, how are you? Anyway. Um. Can you are you gonna give it a try? I'm gonna read the question. Saving money tip. Money. All right. In Canada, we can find a anti-slip traction ad called Lava Grip. It's 100% crushed lava rock, contains mm -hmm. no chemicals. Use it to build high under substrate. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So use mm -hmm. it kind of as a substrate builder. Yeah. That's interesting. That's I've cool. heard of it. I've never You've seen it up close it, and personal, huh? personal, but yeah, I have heard of it. That's cool. Alice That's B. Cool. Hi, Alice B. I have a 15 gallon with a giant betta, eight neon tetras, and five unlers. How many pygmy cores? Could I add? Also, got algae growing on the back of the tank. Any suggestions of what would eat it? Yeah, fifteen gallon a clown pleco would be a good a good option for that situation. So you got the giant betta. You've got eight neons and five on there. So that's cool. That that's a nice thing. I you go a half dozen pygmy quarries. Why don't you do that? Start off with six. See how you like it. If it's still sparse, you could always add more of the neons, the unlers, or more pygmies. But I would go that route. For sure. Oh, Clue. Fish fan 20 gallon long. Thank you again for the super chat. Clue. Oh, Clue. See, I did see that movie, but I only saw it once and I saw it. I'm putting a that long on the list. Time ago. I have not. Put that on the list. I thought we're going to brush up on, on that one. List. I thought it was on our list and we were thinking about watching it one time. Or we did. Oh, I did see it and I thought we watched it. Or maybe I watched it and then you wanted to put it on the list. Maybe because I haven't seen it in, in forever, but yeah, that's a good that's a good one. I like it. I like it. Dedicate Aquatics, thank you for the super chat. Will you be going to the Triple Crown? There will be plenty of cichlids and others to be had <laughs> at the auction. Oh yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, the Triple <laughs> Crown is the week before um, Aquashella Dallas, oh. and so that I I, re I had that plan. I was planning to go. But there were two problems. One, we have a baseball tournament the week before, and then the Triple Crown would be happening, and that's like a five-day thing. And then we've got Aquashella Dallas, which turns into a longer trip. So I don't think we're going to be able to make the Triple Crown, and I am highly disappointed because that sounds like a really, really cool thing that's going to be happening. But fortunately, I don't think it's going to happen. Which stinks. All right, what do you say? Should we uh, wrap this bad boy up for the night? Wow, it's 9.30 It's right? 9.33 wow. Central Standard Time. We've been talking and blabbing on forever. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, I think we're going to wrap this thing up. It was great having all of you here. Thank you to all Yay. our moderators, James and Oinkmaster. And I know Wendy was here for others. And uh -huh. uh, Dave and Finn Wiggles is back in the house very exciting killer kitty stopping uh, in killer kitty yeah we got everybody Safe travels. all the cool people thank you for all the super chats and stickers and great questions uh next week we will well next week what was going on next week why was i thinking that only i was going to be here next week oh that's the week after no 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 that is next week because you are taking our younger son to a baseball game so oh, next week, oh next boy, I'm week, gonna be freezing my butt off at a baseball, baseball game. Probably just gonna be me and then little Miss Sleepy Pants over here. If she's still spewing out sentence fragments, <laughs> we'll we'll get that in Maybe. a couple of weeks. But anyway, thank you so much. Really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight yeah. and being part of the crew. We will see you again next week. Have a great rest of the week. Bye bye. Bye.